Happy Venus Day, everybody. Welcome to these Love Energy Tarot card readings for Friday, September 16th. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. If you're new, let me introduce myself. My name is Jane. We are super happy to have you here. Thank you all so much for joining me. So this week for the love readings, as always, we have two piles. The first pile is specifically for those of you who are married or in established relationships. And the second pile is for those of you who are single and looking for love, or if you are in some kind of a situation shift. Timestamps for each are gonna be found in the description box and the comment thread down below. So go ahead and click those to jump to your reading. And as a quick reminder, for those of you who are members of my website of any tier, please make sure you log into the website and access the blog page for the weekly love readings that I do for each zodiac sign. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. Alrighty, so this first reading is for those of you who are married or in established relationships. So we are going to go, oh, okay. <laughs> I just wanted to start off with a single card from this tarot deck. This is the psychic tarot deck, just to kind of set the tone for everything. Okay, so we have this crown chakra coming out. So the crown chakra, as we know, is a high, high vibrational chakra. And there's a lot of knowledge, a lot of consciousness, a lot of deep spiritual connection coming through here. And I'm wondering if right now with Mercury retrograde coming into this, which is in the seventh house or in Libra, well, I, I don't know your rising sign, but it's in Libra right now. Um, and it's in opposition with Jupiter. And so I think there are thoughts and discussions being had about expansion. And there are a lot of enlightening or awakening moments or insights that can be received if you're open to it and if your partner is also open to it. It seems that you and your partner are maybe a little bit more connected in the spiritual space, you know, physically uh, with Venus being in Virgo, sometimes it can feel like there's a little bit of emotional distance and the connection is usually more rooted in like acts of service for one another or doing things or being available to help in some way. It's not necessarily the most romantic place, but it can be romantic in that the two of you have some kind of grander vision that you're both working toward. That's really when the romance can really come online. It's like, wow, here's a partner who I'm truly running parallel with we want the same things we want to build the same things and we're both willing to put in the time and the energy and the effort into that thing so a lot of times venus in virgo is not about the relationship so much as what can be built as a result of the relationship and so with the crown chakra i feel like there is a shift in the way you both are approaching the connection in general so let's see what comes through for you. Now, the first set of cards, the first four cards I'm gonna pull out are the cards that will signify the energy for the person watching. And then we'll take a look at the partner energy after that. Okay, so we're just gonna start with four cards here. So we have the devil, the sun, six of wands, like that one wanted to come out. Ooh, and the lovers. A lot of major arcana this week. Um, you know, we are building up to this new moon in Libra, which is happening on the 25th. That is a powerful moon. If you have not watched my the recent video that I published called New Moon Magic about really how to utilize that particular moon and how to do a ritual if you want, um, please check that one out. Because I feel like coming up here in the next couple of, or like next week and a half or so, um, there is going to be a feeling of shift. And I, I feel strong success and expansion and prosperity for you, both materialistically within the relationship and also spiritually, especially because we have this crown chakra present. Now we got three major arcanas, which indicate a big week. Now you may need to make some choices this week, which may or may not have anything to do with the relationship itself. It may be career choices, financial choices, or other things. Um, but if you are facing some kind of a choice, I do think communicating that with your partner would be a really, really, really good idea. If you are struggling a little bit in your relationship, uh, as I see with the devil, 
Um, though not, that won't apply to everybody. Not everyone is going through a hard time romantically. Um, but the devil says, it's kind of like you're, you're having to contend with the shadow aspect of yourself right now. And the relationship may be bringing that out. But when we have the sun right next to it, it's good to have that illumination on the shadow. And we have a sun here as well in the background of this angel. So like whatever shadowy elements are creeping up for you right now, whatever fears or insecurities or traumas or repeated patterns or whatever it is, whatever is creeping up for you, I don't know that it's going to be able to get in the driver's seat because you have too much awareness right? You have too much awareness that something is surfacing for you and therefore it doesn't have control. So, but communicating that with your partner would be advantageous. Um, first of all, I feel that they would be highly supportive. So in case you were wondering or worried about that, I do think they'll be very supportive. I also think they'll let you deal with what you need to deal with you know, they're not going to try to come in and rush in and fix it or try to tell you what to do. And, you know, I think they respect you a lot. Um, and actually a lot of self-respect is really needed right now. You're going to have to have certain self-respect in order to show up in a certain way that you said that you were going to show up. Um, especially when it comes to couple goals, right? When it comes to taking yourself to new places. And, and maybe, maybe you have more materialistic goals. Like I need to earn more income so we can go on this vacation, or I need to do this so we can buy this home, or we need to get a new job. So our kid can go to private school or like whatever the case is, if you have more materialistic ambitions right now, I think the materialism is definitely coming out with the devil. And he's just saying, you know, this may not be the ideal path that you thought it would be, but it will be the most effective. Um, so I think we are having to, it's see, and I, I know that these seasons, right. When we say, Oh, we're in Virgo season. It's such a short period of time. It's only like 30 days. Right. And then we have Venus in there and she's not in, in Virgo for very long either, but even though it's a short period of time, every single season does bring up something new and it does carry us forward in some way. Virgo is highly industrious. It's roll up your sleeves, get your hands dirty, get yourself on the assembly line and start putting things together. Is it glamorous? No. Is it kind of a little bit of a thankless position? Yeah. Doing thankless things that you're not going to get the appreciation for is, does that suck sometimes? Yeah, it does, but it helps you, right? It helps, it helps you. And so there, there, you shouldn't be, well, I mean, you can do what you want, but the recommendation is to not turn your back on the dirty work types of things that ultimately help you and also likely your partner as well. All right. So whatever's rearing its ugly head here with the devil, it's easily rectified by consciousness. As we see with the sun, it's easily rectified with spiritual, um, knowledge. Okay. And I think your partner, we'll see what comes through for your partner's energy, but I, I suspect a lot of support and that they are too in a similar boat. So let's see five of cups. Seven of coins. Four of swords. So now you're getting all the major arcana. They are not getting the major arcana. Your partner is in solution mode which Virgo season is fantastic for a Mercury retrograde is also fantastic for solution mode, by the way, because uh, it gets us out of our normal way of thinking. And with the crown chakra, there are a lot of, you know, in insights that can be received. Um, it tells me four of swords tells me that your partner is willing to receive insight. So they are open. And I think a lot of that has to do with how they can support you and how they can contribute as well. 
they're looking at something from a more like it's just more of a change of pace. I think they're just looking at something. They're looking at a path or a route that had been taken, whether individually or together as a couple. And they're saying, all right, this isn't really working anymore. So how do we shift focus and what should we shift our focus to? And again, putting focus outside yourself with Virgo being a service oriented sign. Now service does not necessarily mean you have to go volunteer at the soup kitchen. All right. That's not necessarily what service has to be, but service does mean doing things for other people or doing things outside of yourself. So if the focus has been a little too in the relationship lately, and there's been a little too much in the bubble, now is a time to look forward and outward together, forward and outward together and saying, where do we go from here together? What roles do each of us play to help support one another? Because I feel that your partner is also going through some kind of, we need to let it go process and, and they may be a little bit more willing to let something go. You may have had a little bit more heftiness with something, but ultimately I don't see that lasting very long and I don't see it continuing to hinder progress in any way, shape or form. All right. Cause we got the sun and the lovers and, and with the sun and the lovers, those are both really positive cards. And if one partner gets those the partnership itself is better off. They seem to be more amenable and, and maybe taking your lead a little bit, following you saying, okay, well, you're clearly in the leadership position here with the sun and the six of wands. You're kind of leading us and that they are kind of in a position to do whatever they need to do. I don't know that they're going to argue a lot. I don't know that they're going to push back a lot I, with, with, the six of coins, like they're willing to do whatever they need to do to balance those scales. So don't be afraid to delegate to your partner. Or don't be afraid to make requests and don't be afraid to initiate things because they'll be open because they know that something isn't producing anymore. They know that something isn't continuing to work. They know that there's a weirdness there. And they're not in denial of that. They're, they're very aware. So sitting down, having a, a chat about it will likely shift focus. And when the sh focus is shifted, productivity can begin to then increase a little bit more and more direction. Um, and you'll feel a lot of security with that direction as well in a really weird astrological time, Mercury retrograde, Mars is still building up to his retrograde. So he's in pre shadow phase right now. So there is, and has been a lot of chaos and a lot of uh, ups and downs and all arounds. And I think having stability and security within a relationship is just important for your own sanity, you know? So if, if that needs to be where the priority is, then so be it. So now we have the four of swords from the sexual magic deck. Um, this card always weirds me out whenever it comes out. Uh, cause I don't really know. Again, I just haven't felt a lot of romance the past couple of weeks. I haven't felt a lot of heat or a lot of sexual attraction. And I feel like sometimes it is more functional. You have sex because that's what you're supposed to do. And I'm not saying all, that's for all of you. I know that a lot of people, maybe you've just met someone and the relationship is going well. And yes, there's a lot of physical attraction. There's a lot of chemistry and that's amazing. Um, but I, I think for those of you who are in well-established connections, I think the, the real connection is more cerebral with Mars being in Gemini, Venus being in, Mer in Virgo, both sexual planets, both ruled by Mercury. I just, it, there has to be that stimulation of the mind. Otherwise the physical act of sex just becomes a little bit more just it's a little too on the physical side, not enough on the emotional side. Now, if you are someone who is into like role play, that kind of thing, 
certainly can do that. That may stimulate your mind a little bit, or if you like to wear costumes or play or, you know, whatever it is you like to do there, that certainly could be an option. But for those of you who prefer more deep, intimate love making, I feel like the only way that that could really happen is if the two of you get on the same page with something and sex could actually be used as some kind of a, a point of resolution. You know, like, okay, we, we've come into an agreement. We're moving forward in the same direction. We've dealt with something. We're feeling connected. We're feeling in sync. So let's sort of seal the deal, if you will, with an amazing, intimate, lovemaking session that will really, really bring the two of us together even that much more. It could be magical if you go into it with that intention. It could be magical if it solidifies a dream that both of you have. But if it's just like, ah, oh, we're feeling disconnected, but yeah, we should have sex, so we'll just do it, that could feel really un- a dissatisfying probably for both of you. Okay. Now don't forget if you are a member of any tier on my website or a subscriber of any level, please log in t- to the website, go to the blog page, and you will see the weeklies um, for each zodiac sign. Okay. All right. Thank you all so much. You know, I love and appreciate you have an amazing week and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, you guys. So this section of the reading is for those of you who are single, or if you are finding yourself in some kind of a situation ship. So we are going to start a little differently than I normally do. And I'm going to use this psychic tarot deck just to kind of kick off the energy connection. Okay. Universe. Okay. Things are turning over. I've known for a while that the singles who are doing the work, who are healing, developing greater and deeper levels of self-awareness, that their standards are increasing. And because their standards are increasing, uh, their potentials is also shifting. You're sort of elevating or ascending into a higher tier of energies and frequencies. People who are ambitious and building things, who are really positive and driven and opportunistic and people who want to help and change the world and provide for people and their needs and and people who want to make a difference with the environment and all sorts of things. And you're growing and you're growing and you're growing and you're starting to see a shift in those that you could potentially be with. And it's not as though you have, I mean, maybe some of you have like a list of traits that you kind of want, but I know that you're also lax on those as well in terms of if the universe has someone better than you could imagine. So you're not necessarily holding yourself to certain hard and fast rules. Um, but it, when it comes to passion, when it comes to intellectual stimulation, when it comes to maturity, you are, you're elevating right now. And between now and March as Pluto and Saturn now, they're, they're officially, October is like the big month. Okay. There's going to be tons and tons of stuff for us to talk about throughout October. We have Pluto going direct. We have Saturn going direct. Both of those making a big shift in March of 2023. Um, and so when we hit that March mark of next year, that's going to be the time when we start really seeing a stronger desire to con- to like fully fully come into connection with with these upper frequency types of people um hold on let me i just got distracted uh we got the the empress so this is these cards i'm pulling out are for the person watching. So this is for you guys. Okay. All right. Yeah. I do feel the motion with the universe. Now this card is ruled by Saturn. It's like the world in the traditional tarot. Okay. It's ruled by Saturn and it's slow and you don't really have a lot of control over it, but it is also an inevitability. 
it is inevitable that you go through this portal, if you will. Now, portal is kind of a magical word that a lot of people use. I kind of see it as just like an, a point of no return or of never going back. And I said, I've been saying that, and I will continue to say that. I've been saying that since July 13th when we had that full moon conjunct Pluto. But here it is continually week after week, that reminder that we have to continue going forward. We have to continue down this path or down this route that we have initiated. And when it comes to love, we can't go backwards on our standards. Now with the Mercury retrograde in Libra, and then we also have uh, the sun and Venus, right? Venus is going to be moving into Libra on the 29th. The sun is going to be on the 22nd, 23rd. And so we'll have the sun and Venus in Libra and then a Mercury retrograde in there. And it's kind of like the return of something from the past is highly likely or highly probable. Now that doesn't mean that yes, definitely your ex is going to call you or that you're going to bump into them somewhere. It just may mean that their energy, their presence, their memory may creep up and you may find yourself in a bout of nostalgia, thinking, returning back, remembering the good times. I'm not saying that's necessarily bad, but I think those things are creeping up specifically to help encourage you to continue forward. Because when you think back to those past relationships and when you think back to to what happened and, and all of that, like you also have to think how, what a different person you were and how far you've come. And one of the reasons why the past does creep up for us a lot of times is so that we can, you know, like really determine how far we've come, where we can actually see it, how much we've grown, you know, how much we've developed. Now the ace of coins indicates new opportunities. Now aces are always just potentials. They're not guarantees. Aces are things that are given to us and we can either do something with it or not. Now the empress will likely do something with her ace of coins. This may or may not be anything romantic. And I think with Venus being in Virgo, it's just simply not the most romantic time um, we have Venus in Virgo and also this North Node Uranus conjunction still happening in Taurus. Again, I'll keep bringing that up until the end of it next at the end of the year. We've been going through that Uranus North Node conjunction for two months now through August and half of September. So like a month and a half, really. And then we still have the rest of September, October, November, and December. Okay. So like three and a half months left of that. And it's opening the door for us to truly determine our value, our self value and our self worth, and to begin aligning our life according to that. So not only are you ascending in terms of your consciousness and your standards, but you're also ascending in, in how you perceive yourself coming into a deeper understanding of your own divinity, a deeper understanding of the specialness and the uniqueness of you. And so now it's even that much more imperative for you to find someone who appreciates that, who doesn't see you as just another person. Oh, it's another spiritual person or, oh, it's another, this, it's another, that, you know, but they can really see you in the way that you hope that you will really see them. But a lot of that comes from significant levels of self-acceptance. And I know you've been working on that for a really long time. Um, but let's take a look. I feel like the external world is going to be connected to that ace of coins. So let's go ahead and see what comes through. So the next four cards are what is going on in the external world? Yeah, see, there's an ace here too. I had a feeling. Okay, it's very obvious when you look out into the world now that there are people who know what they want from their life 
and are going after it and the people who don't. Ace of Swords, you're, you're clear on that. And this is not about judging people, right? This is about acknowledging the differences in people. And you don't have to condemn someone for being lost. But right now, this Mars in Gemini and this Mercury retrograde and all the retrogrades is really showcasing who has some, some sense of direction, because Mars and Gemini wants to be all over the place. And if someone has no direction, they are going to be all over the place. They're going to be scattered, disorganized. They're going to be starting and stopping and starting and stopping and starting and stopping. There's going to be no stability. There's going to be no, like no sense of security at all. And then there's going to be the people who are, they're like a rock, right? They're like so unshakable, so unbendable. It's like the difference between who built their house on quicksand versus who built their house on the stone. Isn't that a parable? Isn't that like a Bible parable or something? Um, I remember singing that song, the wise men built his house upon the rock. I don't know if that's a normal song or not, but you know, I feel like a lot of people who built their houses on quicksand right now, like their houses are falling apart. And here you are very stable. And I think you are starting to be, you're like ma magnetically being pulled toward the, the more stable and the more secure that could be financial security, but emotional security and security within themselves in the way that you have developed greater levels of security within yourself. Now the queen of wands, I don't feel is like a lover. Okay. I feel like the queen of wands is a social contact. Now with Pluto, I, I'm getting a little ahead of myself and I'm so sorry about that. But with Pluto moving into Aquarius next year between 2023 and 2024, um, and it's, you know, it's kind of slowing down now and it's preparing to do it's direct moving direct on October 8th. We also have Mars in the, in Gemini, which is a very social sign as well. I feel that your social circles, your social networks are just really important. And a queen of wands I love as a connection with an empress. This is someone who is entrepreneurial, business-minded, financial-minded. She's, she's interested in both the enjoyment and pleasure and love of life, but she is also interested in material success as well. And I feel a Jupiterian quality coming from her. That's just intuitive. That's not actually a tarot thing because she's actually a card of Aries. But I, I feel strong Jupiterian energy coming from her, meaning she enjoys the spiritual growth as much as the material growth. She wants both, all of it. She wants all of it. And I feel that that's a little bit in line with an Empress energy as well. She does want all of it. She wants everything that she wants to experience in life. And she wants to grow and to be a deep, intelligent, self-aware, spiritual, philosophical type of person. And that's what there, there is this magnetism happening. And as you develop your social circles, I feel that your romantic options are therefore enhanced as well. Social circles leading to romantic, romantic potentials. Um, I mean, I keep looking at that universe card and I just say like, Hey, there's something pretty hefty turning over something that has been stuck for a very long time. It's starting to dissipate. And this is perfect for Pluto leaving Capricorn. It's been in there since 2008, you know, now 2023, 15 years later, we are ready to, um, to feel that shift. So when you think about your romantic life for the past 15 years, you know, it's, you're never going back there. You're never going back there. Never in your lifetime, unless somehow you end up living for 250 years, which I doubt. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and take a look here at the sexual magic deck. Ooh, death. Well, 
when it comes to romantic partners, obviously sex is a important part of that. Your sexual habits are transforming. Your sexual preferences are transforming. Your emotional demands also transforming because now you don't need sex to validate you. I'm not saying any, I'm not saying all of you did, but maybe you did. Maybe you needed sex to make you feel safe. Maybe you needed sex to make you feel like you were loved. But now, because here you are, the Empress does not need sex (laughs) to make her feel anything. What she wants sex for is to make love with someone, right? She wants the tantric experience where the universe is involved, right? Where it's like you and your partner and God, right? Where it's this life changing type of thing. Now I'm not saying you have to have that every single time, but it's also, well, if someone can't give me that, you know, then probably it's not really going to work out, you know, cause we, it's, it's not that you're, um, cause uh, I'm just trying to like, I want to make the distinction because we know that often when you meet someone and you feel all those butterflies and you get that excitement and you get nervous when you see their name on your phone and like, that's a totally different thing. I'm not talking about that. Okay. That's like when you meet someone who is familiar, who loves you in a familiar way from your past and you're going to like go through a whole new karmic thing again, right? It's a repeated pattern. It's familiar to you and that's why it feels good. That's not where we're going with this. Okay. This is growth. This is maturity. This is advancement. And the real tantric, deep, meaningful, energetic unions I think, I just think that's what you require now. You're not going to be happy just settling for someone that can only give you the physical act. If they don't understand how the energy exchange works, if they don't understand the importance of intellectual stimulation, if they don't understand the importance of mutual respect within a connection, then it's probably not going to go anywhere. And with the Empress, sometimes I feel that she puts herself a little bit on the shelf. You know, she, she can be, you know, voluntarily celibate for quite some time before going out and, you know, opening herself up to that because she's like energetically cleansing and she's okay with that. And she doesn't feel this like animal urge to just go jump on the bone, like jump the bones of someone random, right? She's, she doesn't have that in her. It's, it's more like, it's gotta be life changing. It's gotta make me feel like a goddess. It's gotta make me feel like, like everything that, that like, first of all, like I'm accepted, right? And second of all, that I am everything that I believe that I am, you know? So yes, your sexual preferences are definitely changing and your requirements are evolving for the better. Okay. Now don't forget if you are a subscriber on my website for on any level, please log in to view the, um, the love readings that I do for each Zodiac sign. Okay. So we go in, uh, specifically to each Zodiac sign and pull cards. So if you want to join me for that, log in and go to the blog page. All right. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.